Okay, in this video, we're going to start to learn about the frequency response of amplifiers. It's important to know that real amplifiers do not exhibit constant gain at all frequencies. Oftentimes, an amplifier is going to have either a low pass or a band pass response. So if we look at the amplitude response, it might look something like this. We use inspection analysis to find the mid-band gain, as we've learned about in the last few lectures. We're going to learn today to use open circuit time constant analysis to find the high frequency, whole, whole frequency. So open circuit time constant analysis, we abbreviate as OCTC. And this is going to find the pole frequency at which the response starts to roll off at minus 20 dBs for a decade. In a future lecture, we'll find the low frequency response using short circuit time constant. Now, just as we have the amplitude response in the upper figure here, we also will have a phase response that might look something like this at a pole frequency the phase response should be minus 45 dBs down from what it was before the pole frequency and it'll have a total of 90 degrees of phase shift for each pole so we might expect a phase response to look something like this for the above figure Now we'll spend some more time on amplitude and phase response uh, in a bit, but just know that at a pole, the amplitude should start to roll off at a minus 20 dBs per decade. The phase response should be minus 45 dBs, and it should tend towards minus 90 degrees at much higher frequencies. In general, in order to find the frequency response, we're going to find the Amplitude as a function of S or amplitude as a function of J omega will be the product of our midband gain. Now remember, for our midband gain, we find that with what we call inspection analysis. We have a high frequency shaping factor, FH of S. We're going to use OCTC or open circuit time constant analysis for this. And later on, we'll find a low frequency shaping function or low, sh low frequency shaping factor called FL of S. And we'll use short circuit time constant or SCTC for this. All right, so here we have a generalized transfer function for an amplifier. We have zeros in the numerator. A1, or 1 plus A1 times S, plus A2 times S squared, plus all the way out to A to the N times S to the N. And in the denominator, we have poles given by 1 plus E1 times S, plus B2 times S squared, plus all the way out to E to the N plus 1, times S to the N plus 1. Now we in almost all real systems, we'll have at least one more pole than zero. So the denominator will have an order that is at least one order higher than the order of the numerator. And this ensures that we have roll off at high frequency. So in general, for our amplifiers, we're not looking at the low frequency response. We're going to have some mid-band response that will be relatively flat, and then it will ideally start to roll off. It starts to roll off at a frequency omega c, and it starts to roll off at minus 20 dBs per decade, assuming we have only one more pole than we have zeros. Now, in order to find this pole frequency, we're going to say that this is equal to one over some time constant. We can find a time constant as a sum of a bunch of smaller time constants. 
So in our case, we're going to say t sub tau sub c is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n plus 1 of tau sub i. And we're going to say tau sub i is a time constant that's equal to r sub i times c sub i. So this time, cons time constant is going to come uh, from the capacitance from the device. So if we think about the capacitances from the device that we've looked at in our small signal model so far, this would be like C mu or C pi for our bipolar devices, or for our MOS devices, CGD, CGS, CDB, or CSB, or any other intrinsic capacitance from the device. Now these capacitances for devices are typically on the order of a few femtofarads, say 10 femtofarads, up to around 10 picofarads, depending upon the size of the device. The R sub i is the total resistance seen by capacitor C sub i. And this comes from all resistances These are all the device resistances plus any external resistances. So, and what we looked at in inspection analysis, you know, our, our little Ds, our big Ds, our little Ss, our big Ss. Now, we're going to find a time constant for each capacitor in our circuit. And so to analyze this, we're going to use superposition. So we're going to analyze one capacitor at a time. And we will start that in the next lesson.